Ashley from the ID Lab, the makerspace of the Denver Public Library. Welcome to Learn, Make, Share, our weekly video series where we show you a new maker skill or activity that you can do at home. Today, we're gonna to be talking about mending. Mending is a really great skill to know so that you can repair your worn out clothes, bags, stuffed animals, or other soft home goods. We're gonna focus entirely on skills that you can do by hand, so no sewing machine required. We're gonna look at how to use patches and darning to repair simple rips and tears. If you wanna learn more about mending, feel free to check out links in the description below. And as we go along, if there are techniques that you wanna try, feel free to pause the video to test them out yourself. Let's go ahead and get started with patches. If you're going to patch something, you will need a needle, thread, scissors, pins or a washable glue stick, fabric to patch with, and something to repair. You may find it helpful to have an iron and ironing board, an embroidery hoop, a thimble, and shashiko or embroidery thread. But these are definitely optional and you can do your repairs without them. As we go along, I'll point out where having these extra tools is useful and what you can do instead. Patches are really great to repair holes or to strengthen weak places. A patch is just another piece of material that you'll add to your garment to be mended and can be made of any fabric. For today's video, we're going to go the simplest route, so what we'll need is a piece of fabric bigger than the hole or worn spot, ideally in a similar weight as whatever we're repairing. Now generally speaking, you're going to want to use something that is more or less the same weight or thickness as whatever it is you're repairing. So if you're patching a knee on a pair of jeans, using denim, canvas, or some other heavier weight material is a good bet. If you were to use something very thin and gauzy instead, your repair might not last very long. If you end up repairing something with a fabric that's much heavier than your garment, the patch may weigh down that area and pull your garment out of shape. Patches can be as visible or invisible as you want and can be placed either on the inside or outside of whatever it is you're repairing. One of the repairs that is extremely common in my house is fixing blown out elbows in long sleeve shirts. So let's look at how to do an exterior patch first. Here's what the finished patch will look like. Now I like to start off by making sure the area I'm gonna repair is smooth and free of wrinkles. So I choose to iron it, but you can definitely skip that step. I looked through my fabric scraps and had a couple to choose from, but I decided to use this patterned fabric so you can see a little easier and to make this repair nice and fun. I already pre-measured my fabric and cut it so that it is a little bit bigger than the hole we're covering. Because I know that this material is likely to fray over time, you can already see where there's some loose threads here coming up, I'm gonna tuck the raw edges under before we sew this down. You can just do this by hand, but since I already had the iron hot, I'm just going to press the edges down with my iron. I'm going to use my little sharp scissors to snip these little corner pieces out so that all my edges lay nice and flat. Now here's what the prepped patch looks like, and we're ready to get it onto our shirt. Now depending on how slippery the fabric of your garment is, you may want to use an embroidery hoop to keep the section you're repairing nice and taut. Doing this is also really helpful for sleeves in particular to help keep them open so that you don't sew through both sides of the sleeve and accidentally stitch it closed. If you don't have an embroidery hoop, you can totally just skip this step. Just be sure to take your time and be careful as you're sewing your patch down. If you have straight pins or safety pins, you can use those to keep your patch in place, but I want to show you a fun trick that I learned from Kelly at True Bias Patterns. You can just use a regular glue stick instead of pins. I'm going to swipe my glue stick along the back of my patch, smooth it down where I want it on the shirt, and then we'll wait for the glue to dry a bit. As our glue is drying, I'm realizing that our patch is just the wrong size to fit in with the embroidery hoop, and I think it's just going to get in the way. So I'm going to take it out. We're just going to have to be really careful as we go along to make sure that we don't sew our sleeve closed. 
you're gonna see as I'm sewing, I'm gonna keep one hand stuck inside that sleeve just to make sure that that stays nice and open and I don't sew through both layers. But our glue is dry, our patch is set, so let's start sewing. When you're pulling your thread off the spool for hand sewing, try not to cut more than the length from your fingertips to your armpit or else you'll get a lot of tangles in your thread. I'm gonna thread my needle and I'm gonna tie a knot in the end. We'll just be sewing with a single thread, not with a thread doubled up. So go ahead and bring your needle from the back or inside of your sleeve and through the edge of the patch. Pull your thread all the way through to the right side. When you first learned to sew, you probably learned to do this basic stitch where you took your needle and you pushed it all the way through the fabric and pulled your thread and then you stuck your needle back up to the right side and you pulled your thread all the way through again. If you want to work that way, that's fine, but I'm going to show you how to do a running stitch which will make this so much faster. Instead of going all the way in and all the way out, I'm just taking the very sharp edge of my needle, dipping it into the fabric, and trying to catch several stitches at once before I pull my thread all the way through. So here's what a couple of running stitches look like. I'm going to go ahead and do running stitches all the way around the outside of this patch. If you wanted to, you could just tie a knot in your thread on the wrong side of your garment and call this repair finish. Personally, I know how quickly the elbow area gets worn out, so I'm going to give this patch a little more strength with a border stitch. You can use a second pass of running stitch or use a whip stitch or blanket stitch along the edge. This is also an opportunity to use a different color of thread or some embroidery thread if you want to add a decorative element. I'm going to just skip ahead so that you can see this finished, but I am going to link to some great resources for more um, hand sewing techniques in the description below. And look, now we have two beautiful patched elbows. But let's say that you have a place to patch, but you want your patch to be a little more subtle, or you just don't like the look of an exterior patch. Helpfully, I have another shirt with blown out elbows, so we can compare the results. Here's our hole to repair, and here's what the finished patch is going to look like. Because the shirt has a lot more extensive wear than the first one we fixed, I've gone ahead and added in some quilting stitches to give this repair more durability, and that will hopefully extend the life of the shirt further. So I found some fabric that is a similar way to the shirt. I've gone ahead and cut it to size, and then I have pressed all four edges down and clipped the corners. So it's ready to be used as a patch. However, this time, instead of sticking my patch to the outside, I'm gonna bring it inside the sleeve, making sure that the edges of that patch that I folded in are sandwiched between the two layers of fabric so that there's a nice smooth surface inside the sleeve. I'm gonna pin this in place, or you can use the glue stick like we did before. I'm going to go ahead and trim these little strings out with my scissors and I'm going to go ahead and fold over the edges of this big hole and I'm going to pin them down. Now that everything is pinned in place, my plan is to do a running stitch around the outside. I'm going to whip stitch the edge of this big patch down. I'll do a couple stitches on this smaller hole here and there are a couple of smaller pinpricks that I'm not really going to worry about because I know that they'll get covered up with my quilting stitches later on. Like I mentioned before, the fabric on the shirt was really thin and the holes were so much worse. So I'm going to go an extra step on this repair and add in quilting stitches. All these are are just rows of running stitches like we used to secure our patch down, except I've used a heavier weight thread partially for durability and partially to make this repair more visible on camera. So ta-da! Finished and well-patched elbows. 
If you find any holes or worn places in your sweaters or socks, darning is a better choice than patching. Basically, darning is a way to weave new fabric to replace any spots that are worn out or have completely worn through. To do this type of repair, if you're darning something like a sweater, you'll probably want an embroidery hoop. Um, if you're doing something like a pair of socks, you'll need something that is round. You don't need a special darning egg or tool unless you already have one. I don't. So when I'm repairing socks, I use a rubber ball. You can use a tennis ball, an orange, a lemon, a lime, pretty much anything that you have that's round, relatively firm, will fill up the heel of the sock and that you won't be upset if it gets pricked with a needle or, you know, might end up smelling a little like feet. You're also going to need a tapestry needle, which is just a needle with a big eye some scissors, some yarn, and then whatever it is that you want to repair. So eventually all of my socks will wear through at the heels and likely the ball of the foot. This happens to my store-bought socks and the fancy ones that I knit for myself. I've just accepted that darning is just a part of the life cycle of my socks and the extra new material from the repair gives them more cushion afterwards. So to get started, slip your ball or other darning egg alternative inside your sock, centering it underneath the hole or worn spot you want to fix. Cut a length of yarn and thread your needle, but don't worry about tying a knot in the end. So to strengthen this area and to keep this worn section from further unraveling, we're gonna sew a line of running stitch all around this outside. Starting from the right side, insert your needle in and just pick up one stitch. You're gonna go ahead and pull your yarn the whole way through here and use the thumb of your non-dominant hand to kind of hold on to that edge of yarn just to make sure that you catch the tail of it and don't pull it the whole way through. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a back stitch. So just sewing back into that place that we just did, just to kind of secure that little tail. And then once you've got that there, pull your yarn the whole way through again. And now we're ready to sew our running stitch. So now let's just go ahead and kind of pick up stitches the whole way around that worn spot. Once we've sewn the whole way around, it's time to start actually darning. So we're gonna run some long stitches across the length of this hole. If you've ever done any kind of weaving before, we're setting up our warp. Starting at one corner, we're gonna make one long big stitch that's gonna span the width of this hole. I like to use my yarn to sort of lay it out so I can see both where my stitch is gonna go, how much yarn it's gonna need, and kind of to keep everything under tension. So bring your yarn across, then insert your needle in to anchor a stitch. Bring your needle back to the other side of the hole, close to where you just started, and anchor your thread again. Repeat this for the whole width of your hole. Now we're all set up to start the actual weaving of new fabric. What we're gonna do is work perpendicular to that first round of setup stitches that we made. And starting at one corner, grab a couple anchor stitches, and then we're gonna work our yarn over, under, over, under, the whole way across. When I'm doing this part of the mend, I usually try and get my needle as far across as I can before pulling all my excess working yarn through. Once you're all the way across, embed another couple of anchor stitches and then we're gonna come back. On this row, you're going to try to work very close to the previous line of stitching, but we're gonna reverse our pattern. So anywhere you previously went over, you'll now go under. Anywhere you went under before, now you'll go over.
So now that these first two lines are finished, I'm just going to repeat this process for the rest of the darn. And if you're mending a big hole and run out of yarn, just cut a new piece and keep on stitching. To finish this off, I'm just going to weave the tail end of my yarn back into the darn we just made, and then I'll trim off any excess as close as I can to the surface. If your starting yarn hasn't already been covered up and embedded in your repair work, you can do the same thing for it and just weave it into the back of the work. But now we're all done, and this sock is looking great. Thanks for joining me today and being interested about how you can use mending to repair your garments. I hope that this video inspires you to take some of these techniques and to breathe new life into something that otherwise would have been thrown away. If you want to keep learning more about mending, check out some of the resources that I've linked in the description below. If you want to share what you've made with us, on social media, tag your projects with Idealab Makes.